Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And Courtney, how are you? Well, I kind of wish this was one of those days we were recording like 50 episodes in one day, because a lot's happened in my life in the past like week and a half. Um, okay, I'm, uh, I'm making it on a, on a today level. Um yeah. My manager at the bar messed up the schedule, and so he thought I couldn't work all week. And so my only day I'm working this week is Saturday, which is awesome. I was not upset at all, but I did tell them I would work to the end of the month. So, like, he could have put me on other days. So I've been just kind of, like, trying to take it in, and I've started a four-week core program on Peloton. It's Monday through Friday. So I'm doing it after work every day. I've been, I'm doing meditations every night before bed and I'm just trying to like breathe a bit because I've been so stressed lately. Yeah. I took myself to the weirdest movie I've ever seen in my life, which is a very high standard because I've seen a lot of weird movies. Um, It was called The Lure and it was like a Polish film that is essentially a spinoff of Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. So it was darker as opposed to lighter but it was also like kind of a musical so it was and i realized i was like i don't think i watched a lot of polish films now that i've seen this like like i've seen a good bit of foreign films in general but then i was like i don't think polish is one of i think french films and polish films both are weird i also haven't seen a ton of french films i've maybe seen there's there are some fucking weird ones one of my favorite ones i was trying to explain it to doug and dan the other day and the more i said about it the more i realized it was it was weird it was called delicatessen Mm. have i heard of that i don't know but it's about this like butcher shop after in post-apocalyptic france And the butcher shop is obviously selling human meat because it's post-apocalyptic and like that's like the crux of the the movie is people not finding out. Right. But it's talking about all the people who like live in the apartment above this butcher shop Mm -hmm. and the those shit that they got up to like the it's just bananas like straight up the weirdest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. I need to watch it. I'll let you know. It was know amazing. It was, um, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to see more French films because they have a lot of uh, early horror where they started a lot of tropes yeah. and I would like to see that. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of trying to take it a day at a time. Saturday is my last day at the bar also. And so I just like feel like this weight lifted and in three months i might come back and tell you i'm kicked out of my apartment because i'm broke but hopefully that is not the case well, and you can always come live here i don't know how well that will work for work um but <laughs> look i'll just quit all my jobs um as long as i can bring sadie um well yeah i'll have to figure that one out but yeah and Mostly because my parents are allergic, not because like right. I have a problem with her. No, no, no. <laughs> we can put her in like one room. We'll just have a room for Sadie. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. So I'll let you know. I'll keep, I'll keep you updated on my life of living in a house or not. Um, but yeah, so how are you? I, I'm at the point of the year where I just can't pretend I care anymore. Um, there are 18 class, like, school days left. Nice. Which is somehow both far too many and far too little. If that makes any sense. Oh, it does. And I literally called a bunch of kids out on failing my class in the middle of class in front of people and was, like, making fun of them for failing my class because they're not failing because they're stupid. They're failing because they're not doing their work and I no longer care to like coddle them about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked a fifth grader dead in the face and asked her if she knew what a power button was. 
Um, like, I just, I'm at the point where like, I don't know how I continue to be these kids' favorite teachers because I am not nice to them. Well, you know, they weren't acting like morons. I'm, uh, and they're not like two year olds. They're no, I, high. like they should write right. these things. <laughs> no, like once your age is double digits, you don't have an excuse for not knowing how to turn your computer on. Right. Probably even younger now that everyone has a computer. Right. In their home. Ah, uh, so it's just. And then, oh, I didn't even tell you this one before we recorded. One of my kids today went to sharpen his pencil and accidentally knocked my wax melt over and didn't say anything. Just tried to clean it up, but did a terrible job. So my pencil sharpener and my Keurig were covered in wax. Do you know how hard it is to scrub the candle wax out of the inside, like, drip tray of a Keurig? I could imagine. Um, I have heard recently about different ways to clean wax with like, different substances you never think of, but I don't remember what they were. I mean, I used, episode, I, used I, a li- I used a Lysol wipe and a tissue to dry it once the Lysol wipe had done yeah. its thing. It worked fine between my fingernails and the Lysol wipe. I was fine. I was just pissed off. A, that it happened, and B, that it definitely happened on his way to lunch, and I found it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon after school when I went to turn things off because he never even said anything to me. If you accidentally... Also... Go ahead. If you accidentally knock something over, fine. You were trying to... My pencil sharpener is next to my wax melt. You're going to pencil do your pencil sharpener and you hit the wax. Fine. That is an honest mistake, and honestly, I probably shouldn't have everything in that corner, but I already have so much electricity in weird places in my classroom because of the gecko. That's just the life we're living at this moment. I'm going to burn the school down. It's fine. That's fine. But then don't pretend you didn't do it and not tell me that it happened. That's right. Wasn't it also a child going to sharpen their pencil that knocked over your crow last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this pencil sharpener needs to be, like, isolated. Apparently. Too bad there's one power outlet in my entire 16 by 16 classroom. That doesn't have a gecko attached to it? No, no, no. There's one power outlet. No, I Gecko and all? So there's one power outlet above my door, which makes absolutely no sense. um, Sure. That the tv is plugged into and the desktop computer and then there's a power outlet that has like six plugs in it behind my desk which to one side is the entire chromebook cart with all 18 student chromebooks and to the other side is a 10 foot power cord like the with an outdoor surge protector that is where my keurig everything for the gecko the pencil sharpener and the air purifier are all plugged in Oh, and the wax melt. So that's why I'm confident I will burn down the school because all of that is in one, one outlet. Just get Pip out first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is riveting. I'm sure everyone tuned in for me to ask you questions about how your office is set up. And I yeah, your outlets. <laughs> yeah, people are like, so when the school does burn down, someone's going to take this podcast episode and be like, here is your arsonist. <laughs> Right, right. This shows it was premeditated. I just knocked an empty pop bottle off my desk with my wild gestures and it like just (laughs) flew and kept rolling. And I was like, I hope it was not as loud on here. I hope it was not as loud on here as it was to me because that was. I did not hear it at all. I heard like a rustle, like it sounded like you hit something, but I did not hear any loud noises. The cap hitting the ground was really loud. (laughs) well it's all good we're doing we're a hot mess today clearly it's also starting to get warmer in new york which is not helping it's i mean it was fine today well i think it was in the 70s today here so like it's fine today but i know it's coming well it was i think it only actually hit 78 today but my car said 85 because that's what cars do and yeah and so that was um 
great. And then tomorrow it's going to be 60 and raining. So it, my sinuses are going to be jacked. I sneezed all day today at the office. <laughs> like, I just kept sneezing and they were like, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. So um, in order to save us from the heat and our allergies, do you have some wise words of inspiration? Yes, I do. Because I am, while living in bliss and trying to live my best life, internally screaming constantly and terrified that my business is not going to succeed. So today, for all of us, the biggest adventure you can take is to live the life of your dreams. Oprah Winfrey. So we're going to do it. We're all taking risks. We're all living the life of our dreams. And everything's going to be fine. Beautiful. I love that. This is no, you know who wasn't living. I was saying, oh, wasn't living the life of their dreams. (laughs) Was it Captain Jack? It's not Captain Jack. What is his? What is his title? Colonel Jack. Colonel Jack O'Neill. Honestly, he probably wasn't the worst off in this episode. To be fair, absolutely not. Um, so we're kind of thriving. I have so many thoughts. We're talking about Stargate SG-1, Season 3, Episode 17, 100 Days. Is This one has, I may have asked this last week, this one has 22 yeah. episodes in the season? Yes. Okay. Um, this was rated 8 stars. Which, which is higher. more than the last few. This more, Yeah, higher than last week. Um, it's lower than the ones that we had a bunch, like all the ones that were like actual right. stories. Story but then sure. last, but it was higher than Ergo last week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was released on February 4th, 2000. Um, it has the same song and same book as last week, but this number one movie was Scream 3. Okay, so here's the thing about Scream. <laughs> I have only seen the Scream that came out last year. I have not didn't, seen any of the original ones. Didn't we? Did it come out last year, or did it like ju- didn't it just come out? There's two. One came out last year, and then there's the new one that came out this year. I have not seen the newest one. Okay, the one that I came saw out, the, the one that, the other newest one. <laughs> oh, the one that just came out with Jenna Ortega was Scream Six, though, right? Yeah, she was in Scream 5 also, I think, though. Mm, oh, okay. But yeah, yes. She was talked about in this one a lot more. I think people just didn't know her when Scream 5 came out. Fair, um, fair. And that was the last one with uh, Sydney. I do not remember her actual name or character's name right now. Drew Barrymore's character? No, no, no. No, no, no. The main, the main woman. It's fine. Have you seen the Screams? No. Okay, so Drew Barrymore dies in the first 30 seconds yeah, of the film. That she's makes in. sense. I thought she died, so, but then I couldn't she think She doesn't of have a character else. arc. I didn't think of um, I couldn't think of anybody else who was in it except for Billy right. Loomis. Isn't that yeah, his name? No. It is his name. It's not him either that I'm speaking of. Um yeah, the whole premise of the film, I have only seen the one, but then I went back and looked at what was the real world of them. Is like the first 30 seconds of the film, someone answers a call and then dies. And that was Drew Barrymore's role in her screwing that she was in got it which was the first one i think Mm -hmm. it was the first or second i don't remember but yes probably the first one yeah great um yeah that's um to be honest ghostface and uh matthew lillard and billy loomis that's my entire knowledge of screen that's totally fair that's uh more than i knew last year before i when i saw the movie cool Cool, cool, cool. Um, on this day, February 4th, 2000, I only have one fact about the day, but it might be the most important fact I've ever said on this show because it is going to make us feel older no. than dirt. No. Because on February 4th, 2000, the very, very, very first release of The Sims. I thought you were going to say YouTube, but... Also, The Sims makes me feel very old, too. 
Like The Sims, like the original, original, original The Sims was released this day. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so that wasn't earlier in time. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Right. All right. Excellent. But I'm also, 10, yeah. Also, that was 23 years ago. Yeah. Cool. I feel like I remember, and I feel like I was like two or three when it came out. No, apparently I was not. Apparently I was like nine, nine ish, eight. Yeah. I was eight. No, yeah, I was, no, I was about to turn eight. Oh, this is beginning of the year. So I was. Yeah. Eight, no, eight two. Year? No, you're. Did you? Yeah, you're turning. I'm 92. You're 92, but you're not, you're like eight months younger than me. Yes. Right. So this, this was a month and a half before my eighth birthday. So you were like, so just the eighth year were, of life. Yes. Yes. Got it. Yes. This is the eighth year of our life. Neither I'm of us were. not very good at doing math backwards. Neither <laughs> of us were eight yet, but it was in fact in the eighth year of our life. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah. We were children. <laughs> um, this episode was directed by David Weary Smith. With a teleplay by Brad Wright. But the story was by someone new. That That's story why it doesn't have anything to do with anything we've ever known before. Correct. It was by Victoria James. Um, this was her first story, um, but she was a production associate or assistant on the show um, for quite a few years. She's mostly known for her work being a PA and working in the art department. She has one other writing credit and it's for something based on a concept by she has no other actual writing credits um and i tried to google her to see if there was like any information about her but when you google victoria james the only person that comes up is this lady who writes books about wine and i'm not sure that they're the same person so i was gonna say that name sounds familiar but maybe I've read the books about wine. And that's why it sounds <laughs> she's familiar. Yeah. Um, like some lady who like is a sommelier and an author comes up and I, mm. I can't find anything to say that they are not the same person, but I also can't find anything to say that they are the same person. Uh, I have no I idea. Hope they're the same person then. Also, do you have a bird outside your window? I do. Yeah. My windows are open because it's hot and there is no, apparently totally. a bird behind me. <laughs> no, totally fine. I couldn't tell if it was like a squirrel or a bird because it sounds like a like kind of like a chipmunk. <laughs> mm, yeah, nope, it's a bird. Okay, great. The episode was edited by Alan Lee. It's not new. And our guest star for this episode, who played Lara, is Michelle Green. She is known for the show LA Law, Six Feet Under, and Big Love. Um, she was one of the leads in L.A. Law, and she was nominated for a Primetime Emmy for that show. Um, she does not have a ton of, like, big-name acting credits and not really a lot of anything that I'd seen. But right now, she actually primarily does work outside of film because she runs an art school for um, at-risk communities. That's very And cool. she also went to drama school with Ali Sheedy. So, yeah. So, yeah, that is our, our um, guest star. Did you happen to look up the guy who plays the younger guy? Garen, was that his name? I didn't. I do know that this is not the first thing that he's done with Richard Dean Anderson because he was um, also in an episode of MacGyver. Um, I did not look him up, though. Why would he look familiar? You? I did and not see look him were up. Curious. I wasn't sure about him as a human i, I was yes i can't because i can because fun fact for everyone my computer if you've been watching us on the youtube you'll notice that i'm not as grainy this week as i normally am because i'm recording on my phone through my laptop which is an interesting concept for me but it's fine <laughs> um his name is shane meyer m-e-i-e-r um mm -hmm. he was Matthew Shepard in the Matthew Shepard story, um, the movie about the like that's about the Laramie, Wyoming murder case. Mm -hmm. Um, 
He has a lot of like random one-off things that I don't know. He was in the Call of the Wild TV show. Um, he was one of the voices of the My Scene thing. Um, he did voice work for the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog in the 90s. Um, his most recent acting credit was in 2009. And um, yeah. That's... All right. Well, I am familiar with the things you said to me and have not seen them. So yeah. I probably did see him there. Um, I don't know. I'll look him up later. Maybe I've made up his face or he has a face that looks like someone else. His face, okay, his face kind of looks like Nick Lachey a bit to me. I don't know if you got that same vibe. Um, a little bit. I can see why you would potentially think that. Um, sorry, I'm looking for something specific that I don't think is on his list. Um, he also played not only, sorry, was he in MacGyver? He played the young MacGyver. Like, he played Richard Dean Anderson's oh. character as a child. Um, the trivia fact that I just found about him, though, that is why I'm still looking. He, okay, he was not in it, but he was brought to Hollywood on a short list for Steven Spielberg to be Charlie in a hook. Oh, interesting. Charlie. Or not Charlie, uh, Jack. Jack is the the name of their kid. Yes, Jack is his name. Charl is Charlie Charlie is Charlie. Charlie is the actor's son. name. No, Charlie oh, is the actor's. Were... Yeah, no, Charlie is the actor's name. Um, I thought you were talking about Jack's son. His name Charlie. <laughs> I thought that's where you got. Uh, no, the the boy who play <laughs> the boy who plays Jack Banning, uh, Peter's son in Hook. The actor is named Charlie. Got it. Got it. Not confusing at all. Totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I have no idea what I'm talking about. We're great. Um, yeah. So we start this episode um, with one of the very rare moments of the show where it is obvious that the Stargate team has been somewhere for a while. We mm -hmm. um, we don't get that often, um, but we're watching these the sky and there's these moons in the sky and everything's beautiful. And the SG team is sitting out watching the sky with a woman named Lara. And Jack is asking Lara when the show is going to start. And she starts telling him to be patient. He says he's always patient. And Teal confirms that this is 100% not true. Yes. Um, <laughs> correct. And Lara tells them that the fire rain begins the same night each year. So Sam starts to like astrophysics. I said Sam starts astrophysicsing the situation um, <laughs> to explain. She's like not great. No, but yeah, and she's just like, well, I mean, and Jack's like, can we just like have nice things for a minute and not find the answer for everything until the show actually starts, and then they realize that this fire rain are um, asteroids that are right significantly closer to the planet than they probably should be. And now Jack wants um, to know what's going on. Right. And, and she uh, says they're getting closer every year. Yeah. Lara's like telling them that the shows are getting like closer every year. And she's like, just blah, 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 blah. Until she realizes that everyone around her is staring at her. Mm -hmm. um, very concerned. And then we get the credits. And as we get the credits, I do have to make a note. Last week, you said something about the credits being different. And I, because I was not watching it on Amazon, just kind of like blew past what you said. But I did watch it on Amazon this week. And I need to now correct what I'm talking about. What you watched, what is currently playing on Amazon, are the original credits that the show had when it aired in the in 1990. Because if you remember, they didn't put credits in until right. season five. Right. On the DVD and on Pluto, they used the 
syndicated credits, which are the pictures of the cast and blah, 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 the longer theme song. Amazon is using the original air date credits. So that's where, that's where the new, so the, the slow pan of the statue of Ra was the original right. credits for seasons one through five back when it aired in the nineties. Gotcha. And then in 2002, they added they post. They went back and retrofitted credits into the first three seasons. Got it. That makes so much sense. I was like, I'm pretty sure these are different, but maybe I just don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> no, you're correct. I didn't realize because I had not seen it on Amazon that they put the original credits in. Right. right. Which is a very odd thing. I don't know why Amazon put the original credits in. Because nowhere else does that. Like, none of the DVD releases have it. None of the syndicated releases had it. Netflix didn't have it. Pluto doesn't have it. I have no idea why I'm Amazon. Also questioning it from a licensing perspective. Because, like, the Stargate production company, whoever I, whoever houses Stargate, would MGM. license to these. Well, MGM. here's the thing. MGM, but, these but Amazon sites. owns MGM. Um, Amazon, Amazon just bought MGM. Ah, uh, so they can do whatever they want. I see. Yes. I mean, there's still usually a licensing process, even if it's like between departments or something, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know. The, well, here's here's the other thing, and I think this is where the caveat is. The, those original credits um, that we just saw with the Raw statue is actually footage from the movie. A very short clip of footage from the movie. Mm-hmm. And I think post a certain period once the tv show did its own thing with the credits there was digital imaging issues and the movie and the tv show were not always run necessarily by the exact same people but now that they're all back in the same purchasing house because of the way amazon bought things they can use that again Mm. i think that might have something to do with it i think it's not the correct choice but i think that might be why I'm also completely talking out of my ass right now. So No, no, you're making sense. I don't I would say I don't know as much about licensing like actual film. I know licensing music for film. <laughs> right. But like I don't know. So it's just it's just because they used to say music for the credits. Yes, it's the cre- the song is the song is written for the TV show. So, that was not huh. I don't know. I don't know if it matters. I don't know. I mean I would make it the same across all platforms to keep consistency. So, like, if yeah, they're exactly. gonna release it multiple times on different platforms, like, keep the same consistency. But that's what I that's why I don't understand the choice to go back. Maybe to they that. were like, "Look, we're brand new. This is brand new Stargate for you. We've changed it so you can watch it on Amazon differently than everywhere else with this different credit series." Yeah, but any, anyone who's going back and watching the first five seasons of Stargate already knows that that is the, like, you know what I mean? Except for me. Well, yes, but <laughs> Stargate is very much a cult show in the sense that not a lot of new people are stumbling onto Stargate unless they're yeah. being directed to it by someone who already knows enough to tell them these facts that's true dom started i don't know he started i don't know how much farther he's got into it because we started this podcast and then um i was talking to sarah about it and her boyfriend mike has also been watching stargate i think he's probably finished he like tried to talk to me about season six and i was like i am not there like we cannot talk about stargate no um but yeah but i mean like it's not one of those shows that you're just like oh wow this looks interesting because it's 25 years old. I mean, I do things like that, but I don't think I would have stumbled. Like, I would have watched Star Trek first. I would have watched some of these other ones right. first. Exactly. Like, if you're like, I'm going to go back into some classic sci-fi, Stargate isn't what people go back to. Right. It We're going to watch the be. ones that have new content. Like, there's the new Star Trek series. There's the new Doctor Who. And so, like, you go back and you watch the ones mm-hmm. that have new content coming out to kind of catch up. Yeah, or you just go to the ones that have more of a massive fan following so that there's yeah. more you're more likely to have heard of them. Yeah. Um, I do also have one other thing that I forgot to talk about at the beginning of the episode, and I'm so sorry. 
And it is really just disappointing on all levels because tomorrow I'm taking my mom to the airport to go to Houston Mm -hmm. to see my sister. Mm -hmm. And my sister texted me last week and was like, so this episode will come out on Sunday, the 28th or 29th. It's the 28th. Mm -hmm. 28th of May. And you know what else will be happening on Sunday, the 28th of May? It will be part Memorial Day. Yeah, but it will be part of the Houston Comic Palooza, or whatever the fuck their Comic Con is called. And I found out a week ago that appearing at that Houston Comic Palooza that I should be able to go to because my sister's in Houston and my mom's already going to Houston that weekend is Christopher Judge. Is Brie going? She should go for the podcast. <laughs> like, we need a representative there. I literally, I was like, you don't understand, Brie. I sp- a month ago, I checked all of them and saw what their cons were, and he was not listed at appearing anywhere, and Michael Shanks was only listed as appearing in Europe a month ago. So, um, Michael Shanks, or so, uh, Christopher Judge will be in Houston this and I weekend. Your bingo card, and I will not be there. That's a real bummer. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. I meant to say it at the beginning of the podcast, and then I just remembered it. No, well, you know what happens. Um, but so after the credits, now that I've had a moment, um, we see this like lovely frontier-looking village. And everybody's just, like, doing their thing. And then we have the weirdest shot ever of a computer set up in one of these, like, little house on the fucking prairie houses. And Sam is explaining the fire rain to Lara. And Lara understands it and takes it pretty fucking well. Like, the way she's like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense is the weirdest reaction to uh, Stargate explaining something that I have ever seen. None of that makes sense to me because this is like you said little house in the prairie yes they're growing their own food they're building their own houses they don't have technology and she's like we find yeah, out we find out later tells me everything. yeah we find out later that they didn't even have nails yeah right so like she's just like taking all this new completely new information and it's just like yeah that tracks sounds yeah, good she should they can't forge metal but she can understand asteroid belts i am confused yeah yeah, I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote no on that. I'm gonna vote no. Um, and so Sam's like, yeah, like, has it ever like been too close? Like, hit the ground? Have you ever seen fire? She's like, I haven't, and my dad hasn't, but I heard that our ancestors did one time. Great, just casual. Um. But so they're off trying to figure out what's going on with these asteroids. So Lara sends her son, Garen, to go off with Daniel on his, um, as Jack calls it, geology field trip. (laughs) And Sam asks for permission to head back to Earth to put the data into the mainframe. And then I remembered that we live in a place where digital computers aren't connected to a mainframe. Right. Great. Um, the number of times that I have felt old in the 30 minutes we've been recording this podcast are um, astronomical. Yeah, that's fine. Next so, time we can't pick a show from the 2000s. It has to be from like the 20s, like 1920s or before. Or from like tomorrow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Those um, are our options. Uh. Lara and Jack decide to go on a walk to discuss the treaty between their worlds, um, which sounds really weird when they say it because they're flirting and that's gross. They super Uh, have a crush on each other. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Daniel explains to Garen um, the results of the meteor falling and explains that it has the potential to wipe out all life and basically is like, hey, this is what happened to the dinosaurs. You're all going to die. Yes, yes. Um, and they're like, well, based on the layering of Nakoda in the caves, 
it seems to happen every 150 years. And Garen's like, oh, so when is it going to happen again? They're like, today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of time to prepare. Right. Um, back on Earth, Sam explains to Hammond that, like, she says thousands of car-sized asteroids are going to hit the planet and potentially wipe out the last of the people brought there by the Gaul thousands of years ago. And he's like, yeah, that's too many people. And she's like, it's genocide. So um, they decide to evacuate the planet to Earth. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, um, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Stargate is only 25 layers below the Earth purely to have that many floors to house refugee refugees in. Probably. So we've probably talked about this, but my brain doesn't remember. Is there a reason why the Gauld are dropping off these people on these planets and then just like never going back? No idea. Okay. Because it's like you're they're talking about no. like some of the planets of they, years. Yeah, some of the planets they go back to, some of them they don't. It also depends on system lords wiping each other out. Because think about mm-hmm. like like Ra went to Chulak, but like Sokar didn't. So Door. who Yeah. Right. And like no, but I mean not even like not even Thor. Thor's people, like they have their own thing, but like Sokar and Hathor and um Ra and Apophis and all of they all have their own I'm sorry, Apophis went to Chulak, not Ra, but they all have their own like farm people and then like the but, like, wars between but then there's wars between the system lords and like to, the Gauld also we we know at this point that the Gauld stole the gate technology they didn't make right. it so they don't necessarily remember everywhere that they put people because it wasn't them right. that makes sense that makes sense yeah. even like, though if, they have the knowledge of every other Gauld that is probably in my opinion the most fascinatingly unexplained thing because they supposedly have a hive mind and the knowledge of all the Gawold but they war against each other and keep secrets from each other so they also don't that feels like a real plot hole (sighs) yeah it feels like it is either a plot hole or either something very different that is very poorly explained Mm-hmm. I'm going to call it a plot hole and then I'm going to infuriate all of the Stargate cult followers and see what happens. Do that. I'm going to start a war on the internet. Um, I will honestly start a war just by asking Doug the answer. Oh, look. It's almost time. He has it like is five weeks time. to prepare. I'll, ask, and it'll I'll, be... wait. I'll wait till the recap and then I'll ask okay. Doug and then I'll start Perfect. a war on the internet. Perfect. Um, the recap episode, I think, will actually be during summertime, so we might actually be able to find a schedule that works. <laughs> love, um, love. So, um, back to Jack and Lara. They're discussing their treaty. Um, we find out that Adora has Naquita in the soil, um, and so they, if they can give Naquita to Earth... In, in exchange, Earth can give them medicine, technology, and education. Um, and they're chatting, and then a meteor starts coming down, and Lara is like, I have never seen these in the light of day before. And so everybody's like, well, shit. Yeah, it's bad um, news. Bad news bears. Tilk and Daniel discover that the caves may have been the way that the ancestors survived, which was a very poor timed discovery for what happens next. Um, Jack calls everyone back to the village and Ashley one tells the people that they want to take them back to earth to protect them from the asteroids. But Panin or Panyan, I don't remember how to say his name. I never um, learned his name. I kept just calling him uh, Lara's dad. He's definitely not. He's just a guy who lives in the village. The older guy? Yeah, he's definitely not her dad. He's just a guy who lives Great. in the village. <laughs> well, I will still be calling him Lara's dad. Beautiful. Um, his name that's is how uh, I referred to him. His name is Panyan. Um, or it's I can't tell. I think it's P A Y N A N, or P, it's either P A N Y A N or P A Y N A N. So I don't. That's why I don't remember hmm. how to pronounce it. But I'm gonna say Panyan. Nope, because I wrote Panyan everywhere else. 
Okay, his name is Panion. We're going to call him Pan. So Pan um, is like, don't listen to them. They're just trying to steal our land. Fuck these guys. Because, like, obviously, that's the correct answer. When you can see the asteroids falling from the goddamn sky. Mm -hmm. Um, And Lara is like, I'm going. If I trust them, you should, too. Because she breads this place. I don't know if May else knows, but she makes all the decisions and is smarter than everyone else. Yeah. So she goes to leave and then she realizes that Garen is gone um, because yeah. he went to the cave to try and survive because that's what the ancestors did. Um, idiot. So Daniel, Teak, Teak, Teak and Sam, Teal'c and Sam take all the people um, back to base while Jack and Lara go to find the kids. Uh, two thirds of the village decides to go through the gate, but the other third is like, no, we wish to stay behind with Pan, the jackass. <laughs> um, so they're getting everybody in and Jack is not answering his radio and the strikes are getting closer and more frequent. And Sam's starting to panic. Jack and Lara make it back to the cave and find Garen and his girlfriend and then the rest of SG-1 makes it back into base as the wormhole is losing stability and collapsing. Like, a second later, they would not have survived. Yeah. Yeah, not good times. And Teal's like, all right, I'm going back. And Sam's like, dude, I get it, but you can't. And so Hammond says that they have to wait 24 hours to send anything back through the gate. And we get this really, like, sad shot of Teal'c's face just being fucking devastated. Um, then we go back to Edora, and Jack is trapped in the cave with the others, and it's raining outside. And um, uh, Lara, like, cuddles up to him in the cave. Um, mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. On Earth, they send a melt back through to Adora, um, but it sends back absolutely nothing but static, and Hammond says that they can't go through um, in order to rescue him. Uh, back in the village, the meteor shower has finally ended, and they go back in out of the cave and find that everyone is either dead or dying, and Pan is like, we tried to flee to the stone ring, but it was gone, and Jack's like, I'm sorry, what? And freaks the fuck out. Yeah. Because, because the gate is in fact gone. Um, and Jack is not okay. Into smithereens. Um, Pan blames Jack for the people dying and being trapped on Earth, or for the people being trapped on Earth. And Jack is like angry at him. And so Lara's like, no, this is my house. Everyone's going to play nice. Uh, she's in charge. But so the meteor, we find out that the meteor hitting while the wormhole was active caused something really weird to happen. And so the gate is still dialing, but the stargate is buried. And so they're very confused as to what is happening. And Hammond declares Jack missing in action. And I do not know no. why, but I honestly started to cry a little bit. To be fair. It's so sad. To be fair, yesterday was a really bad day um, in terms of just like my emotional well-being. So I don't know if that's actually why I was crying. But when he said missing in action, I literally just started crying. That's was, was fine. Um but the rest of SG-1 is like, can we like contact an ally capable of interstellar travel? Like, can we call the Tolan? Can we call the Tok'ra? We know people who can fly spaceships. Like, let's not rule this out. And he's like, yeah, like, do whatever you can. But like, legally, I have to do this. Because there is actually like a legal timeline that the military has to do those yeah. kinds of things in. Um, so then... We go back to Adora, and Lara gives Jack a clean work shirt and basically tells him he has to help rebuild since there's so few people left. And he's, like, basically one of them now because he's not going anywhere because there's no fucking gate. Yeah. 
Um, and then we, it hopped back and forth between the two perspectives a lot. And so it's a little mm-hmm. tricky to talk about. I feel like, um, but then Sam and Hammond are talking about um, when Sokar attacked the iris with a particle beam and how that may be the answer to figuring out how to get back to Jack. And she's like, well, the only problem is that we don't have a particle beam. And he's like, well, then I guess you better get started. And he's like, great, build one. Yeah. She was like, okay, well, that's... Hammond doesn't know anything about technology. Um, Jack is trying to dig out the gate on his own after he literally just worked in the fields all day because he is for sure, like, not giving up on getting back home. And then we go back to Sam, who is working through the night because she, like, can't let Jack wait a year for the Tolan to be able to rescue him. And then, and this is my favorite scene in the entire fucking episode, even though it is devastating. Because... <laughs> Janet is like, you really miss him, don't you? And she's like, yeah. And Janet goes, this isn't a problem, is it? And Sam's like, no. No. Because uh, Janet's no fool. And Janet is not a fool. I literally wrote, Janet sees it in Sam's eyes how much she misses him and asks about it in terms of, you know, the military laws and whatnot. Right. Right. <laughs> I just put Janet's no fool. I didn't get no. technical. <laughs> no. Um. Jack is still being bummed out, so Lara tries to cheer him up, um, and she tells him that after her husband died, she mourned him for a hundred days without leaving her house or talking to anyone, but then she did. The title of the episode. Yes. But also, I really liked the way she said that. She was like, when my husband Mm -hmm. died, I mourned him for a hundred days. I didn't leave the house. I didn't talk to anybody. And he's like, what did you do after a hundred days? She goes, I left the house and I talked to people. And she didn't say that she wasn't still mourning. She didn't say that she was okay. She just said that she let herself be miserable for a hundred days. And then she moved on with her life because that's what you have to do. Exactly. Grief is um, a process and you have to go through it. Yeah. And then we flash forward three months. Or, it's a very uh, long time. It is, but three months is also a hundred days. Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. I didn't. Even <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and J- I wrote Jack and Lara are playing house, and he yeah. has become integral to their society. But on the other hand, Sam also successfully got the particle particle beam to operate. Yeah. Um, and then. <laughs> I didn't take any notes on, like, the next couple scenes because they were just, like, weird and Jack was just making out with Lara a bunch and then people were dancing and partying and singing and everybody's, like, just... Yeah. I just wrote, Jack is potentially going to marry Lara. I said, is she the next three seasons Sharae? Like, for the next three seasons, are we going to be following her every, like, 12 episodes? And because Um, Jack's in love with her. Right. Um... But then the particle beam worked. But the gate is horizontal, is what they figure out when they put the melt in there. So Teal'c is going to have to like be mad quick and get himself in there before he gets sucked back into the gate when he goes through. So like that's going to be interesting. Um, and then after this drunken revelry party where Jack is maybe marrying Lara, um, she says that she wants him to ma- give her a child. To be fair, earlier before the revelry or during the revelry, when she was like chatting with him and she was like, We have to talk or whatever, I thought she was going to tell him she was pregnant. So we just weren't there yet. Right. And she was like, I waited until I knew you were happy and I knew that you'd belong here. Um, and she was like, And that you left the old life behind. And he's like, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm never going to leave it behind. Doesn't mean I don't have feelings for you. Like, right. It just reminds me <laughs> things can be the same. I just wanted to say something, but then it was just that it reminds me of Once Upon a Time and where they just say we are both all of the time. After, so you've seen Once Upon a Time, right? I've seen all of it. Okay. After the first season, (laughs) when they get their memories back and they keep talking Mm -hmm. about things that Mary Margaret did versus Snow and Charming versus David, and they're like, but we are both. 
And so like, yeah. for the first half of the second season, every time they talked about anything, they were like, it's okay, we are both. And I just, <laughs> my brain, when he was like, I, I love them, but also I can still love you. I was like, because we are both. <laughs> I feel like that was so long ago I watched that second season that I don't like, like, I remember them having a thing about being the both people, but I just it's it. It's because in my Once Upon a Time rewatch podcast, I'm only on season four no i'm only on season four they just finished the frozen Mm. part and the hosts of the podcast make fun of the we are both a lot (laughs) so it's like more fresh in my mind (laughs) um so uh teal heads to edora and jack and panion are trying to work through one of the most epic hangovers I've ever seen. I swear to God, the way that Jack was trying to chop wood. Uh, I, I've never seen someone that hungover in my entire life. <laughs> like that was uh, insane. I feel like I've seen someone we both know that I won't call out that hungover before. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Your sneeze did not come through the microphone. That's amazing. Um, I sneezed as an answer because I know exactly what you're saying and you're not wrong. I know. (laughs) Um, So. uh, Teal'c secures himself in, in Edora and has to dig himself out of the tunnel then we go back to lara and jack and lara is going to toss all of jack's old clothes because they remind him of home and he's like finally decided that it's That's okay so sad so sad like why and, would you like even and he if starts to let go you want to keep the memories right like he start he starts to argue with her because the jacket's really cool and i go hell yeah the jacket's really cool <laughs> um jacket is cool um, the gate is going to close automatically and they can't reopen it because the thing that it does when it pulses open will uh, literally kill Teal. Um, right. And he will also only have four hours of oxygen in that tunnel to dig himself out. And your time starts now. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Lara throwing Jack stuff out and decides to turn his walkie talkie on like a Snoopy like little bitch. <laughs> and um but thank goodness she did. Thank God she did because Sam was talking in the walkie talkie. And I thought she was gonna try to hide it. I thought for sure she wasn't telling him. She was like, I want a kid. If he knows this right. happened, it can't have right. a kid. But then so they're all sitting there and they're talking and blah 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 and Jack's like settled in and everything and then she just like the guilt got to her and she goes, I, there were voices on this thing. And so then Jack's like, hello. And Teal's like, Colonel O'Neill, I'm here. And Jack freaks out. And in the quickest resolution in the history of the world, um, he freaks <laughs> out, starts digging a hole. He and Teal see each other. He's like, oh, Teal, you stubborn son of a bitch. And then everything's all better. Right. Everything's fine. Um, they send all the people from Eudora back. Jack has to say his goodbyes, and it's all sad. And it, it, it is genuinely like sad to say goodbye to Lara, but also they do a really good job of showing that Sam is upset, super upset, but trying super hard not to be because she has no goddamn right to be. Yeah, right. Except for that, I don't know. He just like went and played house for three months, where while she spent the last three months missing him and building a fucking particle beam to save him yeah if they ever get married and there's ever a fight of i love you no i like i love you more no i love you more bitch she loves you more she built a fucking particle beam sam wins Um, every time yeah and um then we get the weirdest closing shot where after he starts to leave with the team lara is alone on the camera and she holds her stomach in a weird way that indicates that she might be pregnant question mark so 
Is she the next Charay? There, that is. A Are we following Charay and Jack? I mean, very, we're at Jack like we did Charay. Like, I mean, a, that is that is a question that you could definitely ask. Um, there was some trivia for this episode, but I found most of it stupid. Um, <laughs> there was one one piece of trivia that I'm going to share purely because the person who wrote it might be my favorite person ever because it was, it was in under the goofs in character error. And it said in the scene where Jack is digging the stargate out by himself, he is holding the shovel like he has never seen one before in his life. Yeah. Well, you know. And I just really appreciated that that uh description. That feels like how I would write a true. Right. <laughs> yeah, so who uh, do you want to punch? Lara's dad, Panda. Hmm. Because he was so stubborn. And if everybody just would have got on board and gone with the Stargate, this whole three month shenanigans wouldn't have happened. And, but alas, alas. Yeah. Um, who do I want to punch? Um, I want to punch Garen because his bitch ass decided I'm a teenager, I know what I want. I can do everything all by myself and went to the cave in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For a minute, I thought he was her child. I didn't understand the family dynamics clearly. No, Garen is her child. Wait, but then why is she saying she wants a child? Like she's never had one. No, she's saying she wants a child because she wants to fuck Jack. I thought she wanted a child because she didn't have one, and I misunderstood. I thought I misunderstood the beginning. No, that no. Was remember, child. so Garen is her child. Her husband died, and remember, she right. and her husband must have died when Garen was young because she tells Garen, "Don't forget that necklace that your like that cross that your dad gave you." Like, right, right. I I threw myself into chaos mentally. Yeah, sense. no. Garen is her child. Panda is not her father. Got it. Yeah. Um, sure. Who is your MVP? Lara. Because she really made the world keep turning. And she could have never told Jack about the um, walkie talkie. And she did because she knew it was best for the world and for him. And she just, she just is good. Yeah. I'm picking Sam. Yeah. Because she built, because she built a particle beam and didn't give up on Jack, even though he gave up on her. Yeah, and made it three months instead of a year to save him. I mean, and to be fair, on him giving up on her, he really did not have the technological capability to do anything alone on Adora. Sure, but also he gave up on her. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Um, other than Lara being the new Share, do you have any other predictions? I don't really have any predictions. I just have some general thoughts. Okay. Um, Let me have them. I did like this episode, but I did not like this episode either. I feel like it was a placeholder that was unnecessary. Um, because I don't feel like it really pushed anything forward. It gave us a glimpse into the Sam being in love with Jack thing. But yeah. like you could have done that in a different way. And sure. if if she turns out to be the next Shari, I get it now. It's just a weird placement for this episode. But to be fair, what other episode wasn't weirdly placed? Right. Um so just kind of felt unnecessary and the whole time i was watching it i was just kind of like meh about the whole thing that is fair i think that calling it a placeholder episode is very valid um especially because my teaser for next week is that um we're going back to a storyline that 
is actually relevant and recent. What? Yeah. We're picking up on another season three storyline that Ooh. is not gone. So, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to actually like I don't know tie up a loose end that's not from uh, three seasons ago. And also, when I was on Amazon and I was scrolling, um, I remembered just how much shit happened this season. And holy cow, is the recap going to be interesting to talk about? Because I forgot about half of these episodes. No, um, I forget about most episodes that we watch, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure, it'll be a whirlwind. Um, yeah. Well, if you have any thoughts, please feel free to uh, email us at deathandaliens at gmail.com. You can follow us on all of the social media at Death and Aliens. You can follow me anywhere at E M K A Y underscore superstar and you can follow me at ce cloud 13 and with that we will see you all on thursday june 1st For much less traumatizing episode of american horror story than much last less week. traumatizing episode of american horror story than last week yeah for sure bye oh god